Let's see, whether you call it overlanding or camping, um, it's kind of a glorified version of camping or a luxury uh, version of camping. Um, hey, whatever you want to do, I just want to see you guys get out and enjoy it. So today we're going to talk about everything from kind of the basics all the way up. And um, you can choose what you have the budget for and, or the, the appetite for based on how often you're going to use it. And uh, you can get out there and enjoy it yourself. So um, who we got watching so far? We've got Summer Ann, VB Tom, Steve Bird, Brian Kelso, nice. Laura Coda, Marie Weber, Misty Smith, Hi, Josh Mom. Nesser, Josh. Kyle King, Ari Almane, nice. Kyle Gibson, nice. Angel Muniz, Patrick <clears throat> Vaughan, Jeff Lone. Some of our regulars there. That's awesome. Jeffrey Appreciate that. Florida, Richard Jadlowski, Steve Bird, Esther Parrott Newcomb, Kelly Sims, Keith Johnson. And a whole All bunch right. Of awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate everybody watching. So um, some of those that are watching are actually some of my overland and camping friends. Oh, JR from Moab, too. There That's you go. Fun. Hey, JR. Good to, good to see you on there, too. Um, so so let's, let's talk about some of this. Um, I know everyone has their own idea of what overlanding or camping looks like. I'm, today, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I'm using. And uh, you can draw your own conclusions, um, whether it's uh, something you've never seen before or you're well past it, you know, more power to you. Um, I also have a motor home and do all that, but that's a different kind of camping than what we're talking about today. So um, here's a few of the things that I use. So, so let's talk about, and then we're going to talk about things that I think you need to bring. And then we're going to talk about new things. Um, so we'll, we'll just kind of go through everything. And like I said, if you guys have questions, just type them in and Jennings will read them back to me. Ron Channels is here and he says this is his favorite topic. I'm sure it is. <laughs> so, um, let's, let's start with what's behind me. So, um, what's behind me is what is the current popular tent these days. And, um, it's called a gazelle tent. These come in a variety of different sizes. They're um, very easy to put up. And uh, inside here, I've actually got my Vision X light. They've got a little spot up here to um, hang from. Uh, and Vision X makes a really nice battery powered, but it's rechargeable um, light. And you can see this is plenty of room. You get a couple people in here and uh, you can stand up a little bit, you know, like it's good enough to put pants on and stuff. But the next one up, you can, uh, 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 somebody taller than me can stand up in there too. They've got lots of nice little pockets. There is a rain fly. All the windows open up. This is kind of the latest and greatest because it just pops up. It's very easy to set up. You don't have to push all the little poles through the tubes on the tent. And um, that is what I'm using these days. Okay, next, I want to talk about this for a long time has been the traditional sleeping pad. Now, there is a much more luxury version of that. Um, this one's from Hest, and uh, it is really nice. A couple of these rolled out, and um, you've got yourself some really nice comfort, even on the ground. Of course, you can still bring an air mattress from you know, home or, uh, you know, one that you buy at Walmart or Target. Um, I don't know about you, but I've found in the morning several times I'm sleeping on the ground. So the air mattresses just haven't been as reliable as something I'm looking for. Um, you can see on the outside of this, I have picked up a couple of these uh, what look like tiki lights, but these are actually speakers. Um, I think we got these off Amazon, right? Yeah. It's called Tiki Tunes. Um, they sync together, so you have stereo sound, and uh, they're really nice, rechargeable, of course, and uh, very, very uh, pleasant around camp. You can set them on the ground. You can. I just made a couple adapters to go in the end of my tent poles, and uh, you know makes a nice sound around camp. We've got um, like a little fold-up coffee table, and all of these things go into tiny little bags, um, whether it's our fire pit or this table. Um, everything goes into a small bag, so um, that makes packing up really easy. We've got a double chair, a little piece of grass that we brought out. This fire pit is really cool. 
when you are not allowed to have a fire on the ground, um, this makes up for a pretty nice deal. And this also has a grill that you can put on it so you can actually barbecue on this too. So um, that's, that's one of those, this is kind of a newer thing that I picked up. And then um, I got tired of using matches. And so now I just have a, a cool little thing that I got for 20 bucks off Amazon and screws onto a propane tank and that'll get the fire started quick. So, we got a question on how big is the tent and how small does it pack down? So it packs down in a bag. The bag's outside, but the it 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 ends up being about this big, you know, so I want to say 12 by 12, and it's about I don't know, 5 feet long would be my guess. Um and it's it's pretty simple. You just push in on the sides and then push down on the top and that thing folds up. So um it's about as easy as it gets. And, uh, you know, it's like a six person tent. No, I, you know, they, I, I don't know how they rate these things. Um, I would say this is a comfortable person. They probably call it a four yeah, person. They probably but, call it a six person. Yeah. And I don't know, you can see the gazelle on there. It doesn't even say what size. So, um, but I know the next size up is the one that I wish I got. So, um, anyways, that's, uh, one of those things that you can figure out for yourself. This is a really um, good size to get in and out of the Jeep. So we're going to talk about that too. Oh, Craig Colbert is watching. Oh, cool. Yeah. Craig, Craig's actually been camping with us while we use this tent. So, um, okay. Next I want to make my way around. Um, you know, that when it comes to a stove, this is kind of the traditional, um, I've had a Coleman like this forever. And Terry then mode wants to know if you have a luggable loop. A luggable, I do actually, and um, that is something that I put in my rear cargo rack because I don't want that on the inside. So we're working our way around over there. But yes, so if you're not familiar with that, it's a five-gallon pail with a toilet seat on it and a lid. Then you just put a plastic bag in there um, that has some chemical, and uh, it, it solidifies, and you're good to go with the uh, the theory of pack it in, pack it out. So. Um, Coleman sells this super simple, very inexpensive that just hooks onto a tank, a uh, propane tank. And um, I've had one of these for years and years and years. And with a single coffee pot and a pan, that can get you through a lot of camping trips. Um, so that's pretty nice. One of the things that we talked about a little bit, I don't know, can you zoom in on this pretty mm -hmm. good, is um, something called a Goal Zero. And um, this is lithium ion batteries inside here and uh, it has a built-in 3000 watt inverter usb charger 12 volt plug so you can plug in all kinds of stuff into this thing it comes with a little power pack that um, you can recharge it with um, using the inverter that's built into the jeep or you can charge it with solar so they sell portable solar panels or like i've done where i put 200 watts of solar on the roof um, that keeps this charged and then this can run my fridge and as you can see all the other accessories here we actually are going to show you that it brews a cup of coffee so you just close this down and hit it so um, it'll run a little keurig machine just fine and what's cool about this is it tells you exactly how much power it's pulling so it's pulling 1136 watts right now and, um, you know, it's, it's still got 94%, uh, battery power left. So it's a very handy little thing. Um, and like I said, it can be charging while you're driving. It'll run the ARB fridge. It'll run your coffee pot, your lights. And in, in my case, I'm charging my little Bluetooth speaker. I've got, I'm, I'm also charging my Garmin in reach. So this is another thing I want to talk about too. If you haven't heard or seen of one of these, it comes with a little heavy-duty case. And on mine, I, I put a little uh, carabiner on there. Um, this is a device that if you really get in trouble, you can hit this. And if you subscribe to the service, they'll send search and rescue to get you. Um, you can also text via GPS satellite. Okay, so when you're in a remote area whether it's up in the Sierras or out in the desert, wherever, with this device, 
it's it's a little bit painful to text from it, but um, basic communications is pretty easy to do. And um, boy, if you ever need it, this is going to save your hide. So, um, or, you know, like in our case, when we get out somewhere remote, if somebody's running behind or somebody broke down, if they text us using this, I can go back and help get them or what, whatever that looks like. So if you haven't heard about this, it's a really nice little thing. They're, they're relatively inexpensive. And again, it allows you to communicate either with your friends or uh, search and rescue SOS on the side, then they'll come get you. So um, pretty nice little thing. So you can see the coffee's done. It smells you, good. Yeah, it smells great. You can add creamer and uh, we've used hardly any of our battery power. So um, really, really nice. It's got a little lid on it and allows you to store every, all your cords and everything under there. We bring along a little fan that um, plugs into the 12 volt part. And uh, that way in the tent, we can have a little bit of air circulation. Um, the other thing I was gonna tell everybody about was you can get these little sealed containers um, from Walmart. Um, I found these and uh, it's got a, they're really nice. They're heavy duty. They got a nice rubber seal in there and um, they're relatively inexpensive. I think they're 16 bucks. And uh, put, you can put a bunch of your stuff. I, I have this one labeled as my vitals. So um, anything super important, whether it's first aid or, you know, things that I don't, that absolutely cannot get wet, I've got in here. And uh, that's really nice. Um, we did talk about, you know, not only the Tiki torches, but um, Skosh, one of the companies that we work with, has this nice little boom bottle. And it's actually designed to hold your phone on top. It's got a built-in bottle opener. And this thing, once it's charged, it'll last all day. You can play music all day. And it is waterproof, so that's, that's kind of nice. Um, let's see, working our way across. This is something new. Um, you can actually get, and what, what's most important about this is it's gear fluid. Um, you can get these from a local auto parts store. Um, because it's a squeezable bag, you can actually force it into the differential instead of trying to get a funnel. They're a little bit awkward to try and get up in there. So, um, I encourage you to get this. They are refillable by the way. And, um, I refill mine with Torco, uh, because I couldn't, Torco doesn't make this kind of thing, but boy, these are handy. Um, the other thing when you're out there, you know, in addition to tire plugs, there's a newer product called glue tread. And, um, this is great for sidewalls and, um, the, what it is is there's glue and an activator and a rubber patch inside here. And, uh, this will help get you off the trail. So, um, you can buy this, you know, on Amazon and, and wherever, um, just search it on the internet and, uh, you can see it's for off-road tires. So that's nice. And then in the past, we talked about this too, the Colby valve. So if you lose a valve stem whether it's rotted out or you snagged it on something, this can be put in from the outside. It's an emergency tire valve stem. And uh, these are really handy. You can order these on Amazon too. So I recommend you pick up one of those. The other thing I wanted to talk about was um, our friends over at Armadillo Bag make this five gallon bag for gasoline. And uh, it comes with a little filler sock, uh, spout right here. And uh, you just fill it up like normal. And then when you're all done, you can just roll this thing up and it's very compact. So you've got, you know, something small to pack out of the way. And on the way in, you can actually tie, tie this thing around your spare tire um, or somewhere on the outside. Obviously, you don't want this on the inside, but um, really cool called the Armadillo bag. And uh, you can just do a search for that on the Internet. It's not something we sell, but really a cool product. Laura um, Coda said she used glue tread on two of her three flats in Sand Hollow. It worked great until I ran the patch into a ledge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course, you know, whether whether it's tire plugs or something like that, um, you're going to have to try and be a little more careful to get yourself off the, tra off the trail. We've so. got a couple other questions. Sure. Uh, Jerome, didn't you have a sidewall issue in Moab? Uh... I don't remember. I, I, yeah, I, I think, you know, I had cut something or I'd run. So, oh, I ran the tire low 
and uh, I, it didn't end up leaking, but yeah, I just ended up changing the tire, so I didn't uh, end up using that. Turk asked, before I pull the trigger, would you recommend a rooftop tent or a nice ground tent? So here's the thing. This is a great question. I'm glad you, um, the, the rooftop tent, um, is great in certain instances. If you plan on doing any serious off-roading, it's really going to raise your center of gravity. Okay. So it's going to make the vehicle feel quite unstable. Myself, I like the ground tent because once we get somewhere, I want to be able to set up and then be able to take the vehicle. If you do a rooftop tent, now you've got your whole camp set up around this thing. So um, it's, that's a little bit uh, more difficult, so to speak. The other thing you got to think about if you've never been in one is, uh, I don't know how often you get up to pee at night, but it, it's not exactly convenient to climb down a ladder. Um, so anyways, for, for what it's worth, there's my two cents. And um, let's see. There's another question. Uh, hey, Tony, Goal Zero type battery or Genesis dual battery kits for mostly running a fridge on a JT? Yes. So, okay. Um, great question, by the way. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. So my uh, response to this is going to be something like this. Um, first off, do not stick one more thing under the hood of your Jeep. Okay, there's already too much crap there. Um, and putting a battery, any battery, in that hot engine compartment is the last place you want it. So um, really, this kind of an option, and by the way, this is portable, right? So now I can put it in my tent. I can take it down by the shore. I can pretty much take this anywhere I want. Now, these come in different sizes. Actually, the camera that we're using right now, we've got a smaller version of this. It's actually half this size that's running our whole camera equipment for this show. And uh, this one happens to be the 1000. And uh, this is the right size. This will give you plenty of power for your, you know, extended camping weekend. Uh, run your fridge, run your lights, run whatever you want to charge, you know, do. Um, this is really what I think is the right size. Because it's lithium, it's reasonably lightweight, and um, I just stack it right in the back there, and then it charges off my solar or the inverter in my Jeep while we're driving. So, um, yeah, good question. But I do believe very strongly that um, you do need to separate um, all of your accessories from the Jeep that, that you're using because you do not want to draw down the Jeep and have a, an issue where it's not going to start. So um, definitely be careful about that. So good question. And what they wanted to mention, too, that the rooftop tent adds a lot of weight. A lot of weight. Yeah, even the best ones are still a couple hundred pounds. So that's a lot on the roof. It's bad enough to have a tire on the back, let alone on the roof. So Two Feather Channel suggested getting a trailer with a rooftop tent on that. There you go. So that that would be... My, like, if you're just absolutely opposed to sleeping on the ground, that's a much better solution, for sure. Because then you can leave it and go explore, right? And, you know, sometimes it's not even explore. What if there's an emergency, you know, and you just got to go? Or um, you, gotta, you need to go help your friend who's on his way and is now stuck. You know, you don't want to tear down your whole camp. So um, those are, just, just think that through. Yep. Okay. And, and by the way, having that rooftop tent is not going to help your fuel economy or the performance of your Jeep. So um, that's, it's just more wind resistance. Obviously, if you're towing something in the slipstream, that's going to be a lot better for fuel economy. Oh, and a guy named Jumpers Clerk said, I have that same fire pit and I like it a lot. Yeah, it's, it breaks down really small. It's the it's aluminum the, too. The case, weight. yeah, it's small. This is the, i get it out. That's the size of the case. It's pretty small. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked with that. And you can get the grill option and, you know, barbecue on it as well. So, um, obviously, I've, I've got a little 12-volt uh, jump box over there. I, I wanted to mention bringing that as well. Um, in case you do run your battery down in your Jeep, that at least gives you a chance to start it. Um, if you can't do the ARB option um, and you, you kind of slid back over, but can you... 
slide back over one more time. Oh, uh, Vanessa Ponce said, tell Tony not to use high burning wood for that fire pit like oak or maple. It'll burn right through the bottom. It will burn through it, yeah. We just set that up for uh, this. So um, I put on um, a very, very low, this is the lowest profile slide, fridge slide that I could find for my Airb. And um, because I wanted to keep this rack as low as possible, so that gave me the most storage space up here as possible. And um, these slides are, are pretty cool. I got one with dual locks and it locks on the way in and it locks on the way out. So um, some don't lock out. So you just gotta kind of be careful when it comes to that. But think about one of our cargo trays to divide up this space. You know, you can see I keep all my heavy stuff. My tools are down here and uh, spare parts, you know, that kind of stuff is down low. And then I'll put my camping gear up here. These, um, in the past, you know, I used a container that we got from uh, Home Depot, but then uh, a buddy of mine that works over at Front Runner, I don't sell these, but Front Runner is a company not far from here, makes these stackable, they're very square um, containers. You can stand on them, they're strong, you know, so if you, if you need to, um, they come in different sizes and uh, they fit, you know, in here really well. So, um, and then, you know, think about what you can do to better. All of us are space limited, right? You got all this stuff you want to bring. So how do you do it? Um, the next thing I do is um, this is, so I take my spare tire out because let's face it, our off-road tires that we have are very, very heavy duty. So um, unless you're, you know, driving crazy um, or just completely hit something. Um, but, you know, I, I put these same tires through hell at King of the Hammers and they're just fine. So I pull my spare out. This comes off and I put this rack in. This rack then takes my firewood, my luggable loo, if I've got a propane tank. Um, and I even have a bag. I got a rooftop bag that fits perfectly inside here so I can stuff everything in here. And then it keeps it dust free once I get to my campsite. So um, this is a great option. Um, that We do make this little rack that can go inside the back too um, that, that just gives you more space toward the back where it pushes everything toward the front. So that's a, a good option too. Okay, I have a question. Sure. Could you still fold your back seat down and sleep on that side yes. with the fridge in there? Yes, so that's why I did it this way. So I can pull these things out, fold the seat down, and uh, my legs just fill this area here and sleep. You know, like if, if the weather's terrible, um, it really gives me an option. And I can, you know, move this stuff up or, or whatever we need to do, depending on what it looks like. Uh, but yes, absolutely. That's why I built it this way so that I could. Yeah. Some people were sleep. saying the rooftop tent saves a lot of time when you're overlanding. So does sleeping inside the Jeep if you don't want to set up a tent. Yeah, so um, Jen's, Jen's done that a bunch, sleep inside. I've done it a couple times, you know, depending on what the weather looks like. You know, we've had some really bad wind where I just didn't feel like listening to a tent all night and slept inside. So. And here's a question. For when you're out on a trail on uneven terrain, what prevents you from rolling around in your sleeping bag? Any tips when flat land isn't readily available? Um, yeah, so if you're talking about in the tent or if you're talking about in the Jeep, you know, the Jeep, you can stack rocks and try and level it out. In the tent, that's a little bit more challenging. Um, now, I like to actually sleep with my head up a little higher than, I, than versus down. So I'll turn my tent and position myself sleeping so that I'm actually up, you know, elevated that way. And that's just a matter of, you know, looking at the site and uh, kind of figuring out which way is best for you. Yeah, for two people, you need a tent or a, or a rooftop. Yeah, yeah. Those mattresses would prevent you from rolling, too. It definitely helps. The foam, it, it the foam kind would. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, good question, though. Okay, so I still got more stuff I want to get to. Okay. Um, this is a cool little light. It's actually made by Duracell. I don't sell these either. Solar charging. On the back side, it has um, charge ports for USB and um, it, it's, it's 1,500 lumens and it dims down. So um, this is a very nice, you know, overall camp light, little handle on it. Um, the next thing I wanna show you is really slick. This is made by Dometic 
And um, it is a water tank that is portable. And um, you can get this option where if you tap it twice, it will give you water. You can wash your hands, uh, do dishes, whatever you want. You touch it one more time and it turns off. Um, this is rechargeable and it disconnects. And you can just use a regular, you know, put this can up on top and, uh, you know, use gravity if you want. It comes with all that stuff. And uh, you don't have to set this on top of the table either. If um, you want to just use the can all by itself, the bottom of this is magnetic and that little guy sits there and uh, you have the same kind of setup. And I just bring an old, you know, coffee thing that I can put a lid on and then, uh, you know, dump the water outside of my camp so it's not creating a mud hole. So all this comes apart and it comes with a cool little bag that lets everything dry up. So that's pretty nice. Off-Road Overland Camping asks, what do you think about a drawer system in the back of your Jeep for cooking and storage? <laughs> so um, good question. And um, I, I've got a couple of comments on that. So one is um, I'm always nervous about cooking on the back, like, you know, with a, a fold down table here, uh, particularly with an open flame. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit paranoid when I smell gas fumes, you know, coming out of a vehicle to have an open flame on the back of my vehicle. I want that a little ways away. So um, that's what I do. The other side is if you start adding drawer systems and stuff, forget sleeping in here, that option's out. So I made this even with our aftermarket cage so that I can still sleep back here if I really need to. Um, yeah. Someone and then, said you know, couples can't sleep together that way. Well, if you have, if you have a yeah. fridge. That's right? true, but. So if, but all a the lot right of people. couples have two Jeeps. Anyway. A lot of people also just have, you know, like a Yeti. So you would just take your cooler out of here and then you'd have this whole under area. You don't have to put this partition in. I only put the partition in because when you slide the fridge out, tools and stuff can fall behind it and then you can't slide it back. So, um, And if you're over six feet tall, you might not be able to sleep inside anyway. Uh, yeah, maybe diagonally. You got to push the seats forward. You know, there's a bunch of stuff you got to do. So, yeah. Uh, Matt Perrin asks, any good water filter systems for fresh drinking water? There are. Um, there's actually a bunch of uh, backpack systems that are available and um, I was just going to remind everybody that when I bought this brand new, I did rinse it with a cap full of bleach. You know, you shake it all up and you let it sit for a little while um, just to kind of sanitize it. Um, even though it came what looked like clean, it is a good idea to sanitize those things. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a couple of water filters. Um, I, I know there's a, one that has a light that you just stick it in the bucket or whatever you have a container of water and it's supposed to kill everything i don't know about that one i, I like uh pills or actual physical filters you know that you squish through so um but but there's a, a bunch of those available you can get them at target walmart you know online they're definitely backpacking um kind of stuff for sure can you show how the basket is mounted on the tire carrier sure and the tail lights yeah yeah, so the, the basket has these clamps that, that clamp it into the tire carrier. And then on the sides, there's an additional clamp that holds it in place. Um, this is, it, it actually is sitting on the bottom tube. So um, it's actually quite strong. And uh, you know, the tire, we, we rate this thing for about 175, 200 pounds, because that's what a 42 inch tire weighs. So you can actually carry quite a bit of gear in this. Um, and like I say, what I carry back here is the stuff that I don't want inside. Um, so that's, you know, the, the porta potty firewood that might have spiders in it and stuff. You know, anything like that is going back here. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, Marcy says they're recommending I have my own Jeep to sleep in. And I, that's my recommendation. <laughs> Yeah. If you love your partner, you buy them their own Jeep. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, let's see. What else did I have? Oh. Um, you show the taillights? Oh, the taillights. Yeah, sure. Let me turn on the lights. And uh, I'll hit the brakes. 
They're actually quite bright. And uh, now, yeah. And it's, you know, it's got a side marker light and uh, it actually glows around the edge of it too. So they're, uh, they're really nice. These are DOT legal and they have built-in backup lights too, so. Are you planning an overland trip and just using this as an opportunity to go through your gear and pack? We're <laughs> on to you. <laughs> Jeep Adventures. Maybe. Hmm, maybe. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's that time of year, right? So we figured this is a great opportunity to um, talk about gear. The, you know, just me finding this thing, I didn't even know something like this existed. I'm, I'm super stoked about that. And someone said uh, to use a high end tent like a gazelle, which is what we're showing. Which is what we're showing. That yeah. is a gazelle. They just pop out. They're super cool. Yeah, they're super cool. Off topic question from Kathy McCavis. Sure. Your thoughts using balancing beads? Friend using them with bead locks and 38 inch Mickey Thompson's getting death wobble with this setup. Should he go back to traditional weights? Yeah, maybe. Sometimes the beads break, break down. Um, I'm going to. So. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to upset anybody, but I never, ever, ever balance my tires. Every single one that I've had for the last four years, I just put them on and we run them at a hundred miles an hour and they're perfectly balanced. So sometimes I think you actually screw things up by trying to balance it, but it didn't even need balancing. So, um, that they, it might be worth going backwards and getting those out sometimes is very difficult. The, the balancing beads, you actually got to dismount the tire and vacuum them out. So, yeah. Uh, Mario Roman said he just installed matrix taillights on my O3 TJ. Took a while to figure out the hyper flashing and splicing, but after those two things were sorted, I love them. I would suggest providing a wire diagram and a Jeep by year guide explaining what you need to make these work. Yeah, actually there's a, we sell a five pin flasher. I don't know how that got missed for you. Um, that actually corrects that. Uh, because the Jeep came analog and that digital flasher converts it over and it's super easy and it stops that fast flash. So by the way, those um, five pin digital flashers are available readily on the internet and at most auto parts stores. We just sell it as a convenience for the customers. And Josh said, you can take the fridge out and run the cable through the back window seal so everyone could sleep in the Jeep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this thing's just strapped in, right? So you just pop it out and, you know, do that. Yeah. That's like he cool. said, he, what he, what he means by the cable is the power cord or, you know, it sits outside with the goal zero and runs it just fine. So, um, yeah. And you know, not everybody has a $800 fridge, you know, they're going to use a, you know, a Yeti or some other kind of, you know, regular ice chest. Um, I was gonna, you know, if, if you haven't camped for a while, I was going to forewarn you to pre-cool your coolers um, at least a day ahead of time. And uh, then you'll find that, you know, everything in your coolers uh, stays good for a longer amount of time or your ice lasts longer if you're using an ice chest. So, um, Alan Alvarez says, hi, where hey. were you at Jeep Beach, Alan? Yeah, we missed, we missed you? you. We missed you for sure. What's what for dinner? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I always like to barbecue up a steak, though. Chicken shawarma, <clears throat> asparagus, and rice. Nice. <laughs> uh, what let's else we got? See, uh, how far are how far out are appointments to come see you for some front rear bumper installs and some lights? Uh, you'd have to talk to Andrew on that and uh, see when we can fit somebody in for sure. And and depending on if if you're not close to us, we might even be able to find you another installer that's closer to you. So we've, we've got some new ones that are really good. So, Okay, looks like we're caught up on questions nice. for now. Nice. Um, let's see. We talked about, oh, uh, air source. So, you know, we talked about the Colby valve and fixing a tire. Make sure, you know, like I've got a, a dual ARB compressor under the seat on mine um, so that I can air up my tires, uh, you know, whether I get a flat or I'm just airing up and airing down. Um, you can also, you know, pick yourself up something like a power tank. And uh, that's a that's a good option as well. So um, by all means, um, just make sure you've got some kind of an air source. Can we show the tent again? Sure. And the inside? Yeah. It's a gazelle. 
Yeah. Are you going to wheel over here? Mm-hmm. So the, this tent has a door on the other side too. So depending, you know, like if you got a couple people in here, you can, um, one person get it on this side, the other person get it on the other side. Um, you've, and then you've got all the, the little windows to, um, you know, open up for ventilation, which is pretty handy. Um, and you can actually get some really good ventilation. There's a mesh up on top. And then there's a, a nice thing to, I've got this Vision X rechargeable light that um, just hangs up up here on top, out of the way. And then there's some pockets built in here that you can store, you know, keys, wallets, books, like whatever you want. And it just want. pops open and close with those handles on the outside. Yeah. It's very easy. Yeah. Do we know what model the tent is? Uh, let me see if it says anything in here. Uh, no, I just have to look it up on the internet. Can you lay out your mattress so we can check it out? Sure. Yeah. Hand me the big one. We picked up a lot of this stuff at the Hammers. There was an yeah. Overland vendor booth. So, you know, this easily fits in here. And it is super, super comfy. Um, you know, I'm I'm five eight, so obviously, you know, there's bigger people than me. But this is just laying down. It is T3 really. T three is your model gazelle tent. T three. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, and I wish I'd bought the next one up. So um, if you if you're shopping, T four. T four is because it's taller. You can stand up inside of it. Um, and you know, I've even seen some of my buddies that, um, they'll take these little tables and a chair and they'll, they'll actually, you know, if they're sleeping by themselves, they'll slide all this way over and they'll set up a little thing inside here where, you know, they can sit inside, you know, say there's a lot of bugs or whatever and have some privacy and read a book or, you know, whatever. It's, it's pretty cool. Ari says the T4 can be found for around $300. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's that's a great tent. It really is. <laughs> a question. Are you popping a squat outdoors, or is there a system you've found that works better? <laughs> well, okay, so um, that's that's back to the Luggable Lou. So I think they're like 30 bucks, and it's basically a five-gallon pail with a toilet seat and a lid, and it comes with the little bags that you put in there. Um, those are also something you can put in here, and then you've got your own private little place to go to the bathroom. So, um, pretty, pretty nice. And then those, the bags seal up, you know, they, they roll them up and seal up with, um, some stuff in there. That's kind of like, uh, what's in a diaper, you know, where everything just kind of, um, gets soaked up. So, um, uh, yeah. So if you go to the outside, I mean, I can, I can show you a little bit, but when you want to collapse this, you literally just push in on this thing and you just walk around and do that on all of them. And then the thing will drop. And then you just fold it up and throw it in the bag. So it's, uh, it's pretty easy to, to set up and take down. Um, Off-Road Overland Camping says, looks like you don't have to air up your mattress. I like it. No, it's really nice. Yes. Yeah, it just comes like that. Yeah, where this, this was the style you had to, you know, blow on it for a while. You had to lay it out, then blow it up. Forget those. That's, that's the new hot setup. So, and that's, uh, I just saw the tag from Hest. this this company it's called a foamy yeah by hest so pretty pretty nice i can tell you that they've they've got a little tag in there about how you set it up and everything and two feather channels said that t4 overland gazelle tent is more durable than the other t4 versions oh there you go yeah these are these are great <laughs> and, and like says, i said i need that yellow hat tony <laughs> <laughs> well um, if you want to buy the company and take it over, you get all the yellow hats you want. <laughs> um, uh, does come with a rain fly as well. So obviously this time of year, that's not as much of a concern. Um, let's see, did I cover everything else or you got more questions? Uh, nope. That's it for right now. Let me, uh, let me see what else I had here. Um, more fuel. 
Yeah, the uh, the only other thing I didn't talk about was um, a while ago I picked up all these little LED lights at uh, Home Depot. They're about 10 bucks a piece and they're magnetic and a clip on. So you can put these all over the place. You know, um, when I'm camping, I can clip them on, you know, up here, um, upside down, whatever, um, you know, wherever you want. You can see it just turns on automatically. And um, these will last overnight. And you put a couple of these around and you'd be amazed. This is a lot of light. And then I, you know, I just took a piece of metal and um, made a, a little hook thing that I can, you know, take it and hook it on wherever and give myself. So in this case, what I do is I put one over here at night. So as I step out of the tent, I've got a, a small night light without having to get out without a flashlight. So um, what are some of your favorite places to go overlanding? Um, so we did a trip with uh, Jeep and Gypsy where we started out in um, Hanksville, which is near Moab, and wheeled all the way across to uh, Page, Arizona. That was beautiful back there. There's nobody. And uh, that, that was just a, a great trip across Utah. So that's really fun. Um, Josh and I have done a couple things up to the Salt Tram and, um, you know, some of that area. Um, Death Valley, you know, great, great area to explore. Um, the Sierras, you know, there's tons of stuff up in the Sierras. And uh, depending on how, you know, cross country you want to go, um, there's, there's, you know, sky's the limit, right? You could be um, either camping very remotely or hitting KOAs every once in a while or even every once in a while, you know, getting to a, um, a hotel or something, you know, to shower or whatnot. I do have shower equipment. I did, I did not show that tonight. I've got a little mat and a something that clips onto the rain gutter on my Jeep and that I can take a shower as well. Oh, can you talk about the Jeep Badge of Honor program? Sure. What about it? It's a good way to find new overland it, it trails. It is a great way, trails. yes. So um, if you're not familiar with that, you download the app, you check in, it, it asks for your VIN number, and uh, then you can go get credit for um, doing all the different trails that are part of that program. And you get the little badges that you... Um, stick on the side of your Jeep. Jennings is a big fan of that. She's got tons of them, probably 40 of them um, on her Jeeps. So, yeah. That's how we find a lot of our trips. Yep. Yep. Great. Gets you to great areas that you may not know about for oh, sure. Oh, off topic question. Sure. Why did Jordan buy his own YJ? <laughs> yeah, he just got it. And uh, over the weekend, he was here um scrapping for parts that we had taken off other vehicles he um modified them you know or fixed them up and uh now he's been outfitting his own jeep and uh yeah he picked up uh i think it's a 93 automatic and um uh, he's got it all fixed up on 35s it's looking pretty good so um it's basically a a clone of my little four shock yj and uh, it's red it looks really good so uh, he'll be out there with us, which is great. He's, he's been missing out on jeeping for a long time. So I, I know he's looking forward to it. They want to go out this weekend. Your mom so. says, talk to your cousin, Michael. He loves overlanding. He does. I've invited him on several trips. So yeah, we'll, we'll get him out there for sure. For Luke sure. Walker wants to know, when are we going to get some good YJ build content? So um, actually, that was our other option today was uh, I almost drugged the the little budget four shock YJ in here. And I've got things like flushing the cooling system, putting on a new alternator, um, just doing some, some basics in, and upgrades as we go. Um, and then, you know, as you guys know, my plan with that Jeep is I don't really want to modify it much more. I want to show everybody for what we did on it. It'll go run the Rubicon. And then I was going to bring it back and actually start putting fenders on it and corner guards and cage and, doing all that stuff so um it'll it'll definitely get more just not quite yet so but thanks for asking looks like we're caught up you've taken that one over landing too before you've taken i have i did that on the anza Brago trip yep and oh by the way this small cargo rack um we make um sorry i should have grabbed it but we make a receiver hitch mount for it where you can put it in there and um 
then have it on the back if you want to do that. And like I say, if you don't want to run this one, you can run the small one and then it'll, it'll just sit in here a lot further back, which um, allows you more room, you know, for bigger stuff in the very rear. Oh, and uh, what do you think of using an LJ as an overland vehicle? I, I think it's great. I mean, that's, that was the whole deal behind having more cargo room um, was being able to do something like that, uh, you know, versus a TJ or YJ. Um, that just gave you an extra 15 inches of, you know, room in there, which, you know, when you're, that, that's what I was talking, I started talking about at the beginning of the show. I don't care who you are. Space is a premium. So all this stuff that packs up tiny, you know, is, is to your advantage to get it in your vehicle um, or hanging off of it or on the roof or whatever. Right. So um, obviously the, the more minimal you can be, the better. Um, Brian Annis, can you pin the tire carrier to make it removable? So the, the tire carrier is removable. In fact, um, five minutes or less before this show, I just put it back on because it was, it has not been on here for a while. And, um, it's two bolts on this side and, uh, then the, the pins hold it closed. So, um, you literally just close it and pop the pins in. So it is, um, super easy. And um, I'm actually, one of my next products that I'm doing right now is a small water tank that fits underneath this cargo rack inside the tire carrier. So you can gravity feed or whatever you want to do, but it'll give you um, about six extra gallons of water and uh, be really easy to fill and, and gravity feed from. So I'm, I'm looking forward to having that as well because... That, as we know, that's one of those things, you know, carrying more water. Uh, Alan wants to know if you're still coming to wheel the East Coast. I am. That'll be uh, in August after Smoky Mountain. So, yep, going to Windrock. Thank you. Great idea. Okay, we're all caught up again. Wow, we're doing good. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Have I missed anything, Jennings? Mm -hmm. we've, uh, we've talked about quite a bit of stuff. How we about didn't... your torch, the little torch thing to start the fire? Did we show Yeah, that? I don't know if we showed that or not. This is, um, you know, I got this off Amazon. You just open it up, um, and then you just fire this thing. But, you know, versus matches, this is a great way to actually get things burning. Um, burns a lot hotter, and it's, it's really easy. And to turn it off, you just slide this little valve down, and it's done. So, um, And it just attaches to a regular propane can. So that's pretty handy. Oh, um, here's a question. What do you use for communication, ham or GS, GRSM radio when talking to your buddies on the trail? Yeah, so um, because we've got a racing background, we're, we're pretty much ham, which is race radio. Um, and they, they do work really good. I don't care if you even have a handheld or, you know, a full-on, you know, base unit. Um, those, those work great. I do have some GMRS radios, too that uh, Rugged had sent over to me. And uh, they've got a, a nice one um, that is rechargeable, handheld. And um, if you're looking for that, you know, even if you want a base ham unit, this is a great way on the GMRS uh, side to just carry a handheld and still be able to communicate with your guys. So check that out, reasonably priced. And it comes with a little charger. Uh Steve Bird said we will be at Wind Rock. Nice. And Alan said he's going over his Jeep and getting new everything now. Nice. So he'll be ready. Nice. Awesome. Uh, Dennis Sargent, what happened to the Jack build? Oh, the Jacks. Um, so the, the original scissor Jacks um, that we designed the whole thing around uh, became unavailable. So we searched for brand new Jacks and actually I just... Here, I'll, I'll walk off camera for a second. I'll be right back. Because I just saw that we found more that are real heavy duty. And um, there we, uh, this was quite the find because we had to um, search to get this bad boy. But we literally just found them. So now what we've done is we've made a mount that allows it to slide in and hook in it's already got the the right size nut on it and then we make a a new piece here that allows it to hook onto the bottom of your vehicle so um yeah this is it's in the works for sure 
and uh, should be seeing it here pretty quick. It's it's on my it's been on my short list for a long time. So, yep, good. Thanks for asking. Uh, sound, Robert Bellomi sounds like a lot of weight to carry around. What about payload capacity? Any concerns there? So that's a good question. Um, and it's, uh, you know, I was just on the phone with uh, Casey Curry this morning and we were talking about rear axles specifically for JL and JT, um, especially a JT, you know, a, an average vehicle like this that is set up for overlanding you know, if you go weigh it, it's probably in the 7,000 pound range. When, when I pack all this stuff, when I, when I actually get everything in my Jeep, I'm adding an additional 700 pounds. Um, I've weighed it. I, I'm very specific about that. So everything I've got that I want to bring with me um, ends up being about 700 pounds. So you know, now you put a couple people in there and, uh, you know, a couple adults and you're, you're getting on to 8,000 pounds. Well, this is where the factory axles, you know, just aren't built for that. You know, when, when you start talking about a full float axle from Dynatrack or Curry, those are built for that kind of weight. That's, you know, that's the kind of axle that's in my 2,500 and 3,500 pickup trucks, right? So that is a concern. And if you're looking for long-term durability, and actually I'm glad somebody asked about this because I wanted to talk about this and we've got about five minutes left. Um, my belief is, and that, that was part of why I wanted to build Aftershock the way I did, is I believe that if you build one of these things beefy enough to be a rock crawler, then it can be a great overlander because you've upgraded and beefed up everything, all the brackets, the axles. Even, you know, I, I know every time we go out to Death Valley and people see me, you know, coming in on 40-inch tires and they're like, oh my God. Well, let me tell you, those fill in a 35 inch hole like it's not even there. So um, the ride, everything is better. And you know, I've got giant shocks and air bumps. So I refer to this as the luxury overlander. It's, it's quite comfortable. Um, you got satellite radio, you've got comfortable seats, you got dual zone climate control, built in you know, navigation. I mean, it's, it's pretty darn nice. And um, it's one of those things that, you know, as you're thinking about your build, um, you just need to consider everything along with it. Now, look, if you're not using it that often, you use it once a summer, you know, you can get away with whatever. But if, if this is going to be your thing and you're doing it all the time, then you're going to be wearing out parts. And um, I advise you to beef it up and build it right. And then you'll be able to enjoy it and not worry about having to work on it out on the trail where, where you get stuck because some bushing blew out or ripped off or whatever. Um, regular maintenance, even, even with a very, very built Jeep, you still have to perform maintenance. But, but now you're talking about just, you know, greasing things or changing fluids. Um, you're not, you know, rebuilding everything because full float hubs and stuff will last, you know, under these conditions for a long, long time. Two Feather Channel asks, what curry axle do you have? So I run in the rear, I'm running a 40 spline full float Dana 70 and uh, that's high pinion. Um, so it's also got its own little skid plate on there and nothing hangs down. The drive shafts tucked way up. And then in the front on this one, I've got what they call their VXR 60 and that's also high pinion. And then like on Terramoto, that's a 70 in the front because it's a higher power vehicle. And uh, yeah, these are, you know, you're not breaking anything, that's for sure. We've, we've run these in our, you know, over 800 horsepower race cars at full tilt and, you know, you're, you don't even see any wear, right? That's how beefy they are, so. Uh, what was the handheld satellite GPS radio again, Garmin? That's a Garmin called InReach. Yes, InReach, and um, it comes with this nice little case. Um, and I, I believe everybody should have one of these. Um, these are readily available. Um, can you see that pretty good? Mm -hmm. I actually got here, it says, I got mine at Best Buy, um, but InReach Explorer. And then you sign up for a service that gives you that, um, you know, ability to text and if you need rescue. So um, pretty, pretty cool. Can you see that pretty mm -hmm. good? Okay. <clears throat> 
Yeah. It's it's a really nicely made unit. It's you know weatherproof and stuff, and it comes with its own little charge cord and everything. So, yep, I I think everybody should have one of these. So you just you just put it back in the little case, and zip it up. You're ready to go. It's got a nice little carabiner on it, and uh, you just hook it somewhere inside your Jeep. <coughs> Excuse me. Looks like we're all caught up on questions. Awesome, man. We've done really good today. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Um, then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, like I said, if you haven't seen one of these, you know, there, there's also another brand out there called Jackery. Um, I did my research. I thought the Goal Zero was the higher quality unit. And, uh, you know, uh, the only thing I can recommend to everybody is um, pack it in and pack it out. You know, there's there's nobody, your mom's not out there. She's not looking after you and cleaning up after you. Leave your campsite cleaner than when you found it. Um, I, I would greatly appreciate that. And that's that's going to extend our ability to get out there and use um, the open land. So um, by all means, and you know, get some maps. I, oh, the other thing, I don't have my phone on me, but I use a, a map program that that's you can download for free called Gaia, um, and then you can you can search for GPX files. But also Trails Off Road has a website and an app, um, and they've got a lot of trails listed with details. You can see pictures of obstacles. They have ratings. Um, and there's a bunch more information. So that's TrailsOffRoad.com, or look for their app. So uh, make sure that you go out there prepared and equipped, bring a shovel, bring toe straps, you know, make sure that you are able to take care of yourself and help others. So I, I believe if you have it with you, you won't need it. So um, hopefully that works out for you. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining us. We will be back next Wednesday. And uh, meantime, have a great rest of the week and weekend.